Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and today I'm going to talk to you about the vital shoulder complex and linking it to differential diagnosis. No doubt I could spend a week at least yeah, on this topic, yeah, but I'm just going to do like an overview of some areas of the shoulder that could be uh, detrimental to the, to the patient. And hopefully, if you're a therapist, it gives you a better understanding of some pathologies that are associated to this area. Let's just have a, a recap on the shoulder itself. Then when I say the word shoulder, we're not just talking about the shoulder joint, which is medically called the glenohumeral joint, which is here. Then it also encompasses the sternoclavicular joint, the SC joint, the acromioclavicular joint, the AC joint, and also the scapulothoracic articulation, which is not a joint in itself, it's like a suspension. So where the scapula will sit, um, hovering, if you like, over the, the rib cage. So we've almost got like four joints or articulations that will be part of the shoulder complex. Now, we take it for granted that we're able to lift our arm all the way up and all the way down, okay? But we can do this motion and people will say naturally it's shoulder abduction. But for you to lift your arm, let's say to 90 degrees, then it's an interaction of the glenohumeral joint and also the scapula thoracic to rotate. And because those two are involved, it also has to incorporate the AC joint and the SC joint. It's actually called scapula humeral rhythm and it works on a two to one ratio. So if you're looking at, let's say the person has abducted the arm all the way to 180 degrees, then 120 degrees will be by the glenohumeral joint in here, and then 60 degrees will be by the scapula upwardly rotating. But also, the clavicle will rotate as well, and this is allowed from the AC joint and the SC joint, which is out of view. So for you to lift your arm up is an integration of all the four joints that we just discussed. Let's have a look at this. If I'd, I'm going to jump ahead and come back. This might give, give you an idea. So the person is lifting their arm from 0 degrees to 180, but let's say they feel something. It doesn't matter what they feel. If they have an inability to maybe abduct, it could be a full tear of the supraspinatus along here. You might find if they've got an auxiliary nerve palsy, because they've dislocated the shoulder, but relocated, and the deltoid is now switched off, you might find that the deltoid is not working, so they can't abduct very far. Yeah, maybe around 45. If a lady who's 48 years old complains of shoulder pain, it could be a frozen shoulder. And the key one would be, would be she would be limited on external rotation because they call it a capsular pattern. So you might find that when she's lifting, she ends up with a, a reverse scapular humeral. If you have pain between 70 degrees and 110, then it could be a, a painful arc. Within the painful arc, typically it's the supraspinatus, but then that could be torn. You might have an infl inflamed, as in a tendinopathy, tendonitis. Yeah, but it can also have a calcific, either way for a tendinopathy. And uh, the fourth thing would be a subacromial bursa, called the SAB, that could also get caught. If you get pain more towards the end of range, it might be an AC joint problem in here. So there's a little example. So if you've got 0 to 20 degrees, full thickness tear of supraspinatus, this is inability to abduct. Maybe auxiliary nerve palsy between different degrees, adhesive capsulitis, 70 to 110, subacromial pain, okay, from the supraspinatus or from the, the bursa, and pain after that, it might be AC, but also it could also be impingement of supra towards the end. So sometimes it's not that easy to work out what's going on. A painful arc, as I mentioned. Let's just jump ahead. Let's go back, there you go. You can see here, painful arc, 70 to 110, impingement under the acromion. The acromion, I know it looks bigger here, but the space between the acromion and the top of the greater tubercle is around one centimeter. Most of the time the acromion is flat, but sometimes it can be hooked, yeah, or even, or well, slightly curved or even hooked, and they call it a type one or a type two. Most of the space is eight to 12 mils, 10 mil being normal. If it does have less space, then it could impinge yeah, the structures, the bursa underneath it, or even a tear of the bursa, or even a tear of the supra, could also restrict the motion within the painful arc. This is an AC joint. So we are typically, there are many grades, but to keep it simple, we'll talk about three. So we have a grade one, which is a minor tear, grade two, a moderate tear, and a grade three, a full thickness tear. You can see the ligament is partly torn here. So this is the coracoid process. This is the clavicle. All right, so this is called the coracoclavicular ligaments, also split into trapezoid and conoid ligaments here. 
and then this is the coracoid chromia ligament along here. So this is the AC ligament. This would be a grid two. We would normally have a step deformity on here as well. You can see part of the coracoclavicular ligaments torn as well as a full tear of the AC. And then this would be a full tear of all. So this could be known as a grid three tear of the AC. Thing is with an AC joint, I've done mine twice actually on this side. Once the ligament is torn, it's, it's a struggle to get it back to full function. Um, it's like a hinge in the door. If you, if you take the door off and you put the hinge back on and you don't quite screw it up as normal and it's, and it's rocking, then that's like an AC joint. So it, it never truly heals. You'll always have some slight irritation with the AC joint within. Um, but in a positive, if you have a full tear and the space is further apart, then they don't tend to give you so much pain. They're unstable, but they don't give you pain. Why? Because the two bones are not rubbing together. A little bit about anatomy inside the glenohumeral joint in here. Um, you can see this is where the bicep long head attaches to the supraglenar tubercle. But if it does tear yeah, around you, that's actually four grades, and they call it a SLAP, which stands for a superior labrum anterior to posterior. So they call it a slap lesion. Four types, grade two is the most common, where the tendon attaches to the labrum, which is part of it, and then it becomes torn in here. So the pain is deep, deep in the shoulder. Like a speed test, it might pick it up. 